created different tutorials, whether free, and then I have some paid for classes also that feature faux leather. And so what I wanted to do in today's Whip Wednesday, keeping it a little bit chill and laid back, is to share some tips with you. I say five tips, but I'm almost positive I'm gonna be sharing more tips. So if you're just tuning in, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, whether you're watching us on Facebook or on the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel. We'll stop and take a second to say hello to some of our friends who are tuning in. Hi, Teresa from Rochester, New York. Hi, Phyllis, tuning in. We got Kay from Jacksonville. That's a Florida neighbor. I'm coming to y'all from my home sewing studio here in North Central Florida. Just want to make sure everyone can see me and hear me just fine. Hey, Cheryl. Hi, Lorette from Massachusetts, tuning in. Hey, Jesse. All right. Hey, Margie, tuning in from Wisconsin. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'll talk a little bit about faux leather and what it is. If you are a longtime viewer and follower of my YouTube channel and my free tutorials, you've probably even made some of these pouches already. We recently did a free tutorial and I did a live whip Wednesday also sharing with you how I made my little Kendall snap pouches. This is super quick and easy to make. It literally takes a couple minutes and I designed it so that if you did purchase the faux leather sheets from us, the pattern template piece, which I provide to you for free as a downloadable PDF, you can place a template on one of these sheets and be able to make two pouches. So I know a lot of you have made that. I saw a picture today where a lady said, here's a picture of some of the things that I've, uh, some of the pouches that she's made from the, the Kendall snap pouch uh, tutorial. And she posted like a dozen. Some had cool embroidered names on it. Um, these we did the closure with just a plastic snap, cam snaps. Now, if you're looking for those tutorials and you're new around here, there's a link in the video description box on the YouTube version of this Live Whip Wednesday that you can click there and find the different projects. This one, for example, is my lacrosse pencil pouch. This is not a free tutorial. It's a paid for course that also comes with a template. And um, it, it's another really cool project. But links for all that stuff are below. And I was trying to gather up some of my pinched zippered pouches which are super popular and I think I've gifted them all I don't have any in here so I must have gifted them all they make super quick and easy gifts I know a lot of you have made them already all right yeah I see somebody in here said that they've made a bunch of the pinch zippered pouches if you don't know what that is you can just do a quick google or youtube search type in crafty gemini pinched zipper pouch and I think you'll love it. Super quick and easy, cosmetic bags, pouches, stuff to hold your crochet hooks. It's just a great little pouch for that. All right, so let's go ahead and swap over to my over-the-shoulder camera here so we can start talking and sharing tips with sewing with faux leather. Okay, um, let me scoot this up real quick. All right, and then you let me know if I'm ever out of the shot or whatever, okay. So these are just some of the pouches. Okay, we're going to scoot these aside. This is the faux leather that I'm talking about. And I think it's important to note that not all faux leather is created equally. <laughs> so it can all vary. When we think about faux leather, we oftentimes will think of like cork fabric. Also, names are like pleather faux, or vinyl, excuse me, and, and faux leather. This is like a textured faux leather. So it's fake leather. It's a synthetic product that has this cool texture to it. All right, and they make really quick and easy uh, fabrics to use for just super quick projects, seconds, minutes to crank a couple of things out, okay? And so the sheets that we sell, we sell them in a four pack and we actually just restocked. So the link for that is in the description box below the YouTube video. You can always just shop with us if you're looking for anything that we use here that I feature in videos and demos, you can just do uh, craftygemini.com slash shop and we have hundreds and hundreds of products there that you can check out. Okay, so ours, our sheets measure eight and a quarter inches, and this is only a 10 inch ruler. Let me grab a longer strip ruler here. Hi, Sandy tuning in from Barbados. Caribbean peeps, that's awesome. Okay, and then the other dimension on this is just about 12 inches, usually like 11 and three quarters to 12. They can vary a little bit, but that is the typical size of these sheets that we carry. Now we sell them in a four pack, so you just get four assorted colors and that way you can use them to make whatever little pouches you want. If you're mixing cotton fabric with the faux leather, there's a couple things to keep in mind in that sense too, and I'm gonna go over this a little bit. So. Let me give you all an example. Most of the time, where's my little scrap? This one is fine. Most of the time when I use the faux leather, I use it like this. No lining, it's just boom, a quick pouch. And that white finish that you see here is just the fabric backing 
on the actual faux leather sheet itself. So it makes it super quick and easy. And as you can imagine, we have raw edges along the side. So that's one tip right there. You can work on projects with faux leather that don't require you to finish or conceal the raw edges. You can leave them raw. And oftentimes what I do is, especially, I, I use this a lot when I'm teaching kids to sew fabrics like this because it just cuts out a lot of the steps of having to like line it, finish and do all this, right? And you kind of, especially when you're teaching beginners and kids, you just want to get on with the project and have them feel successful because they completed something. So what we often will do is after it's been sewn, because this has been sewn wrong sides together, the stitching is here and the raw edges are exposed. You can just take scissors after you've sewn your project and trim things up to even things out. So especially for beginners and kids, if your seam allowances are like a little bit wonky, don't worry too much because if you're using a faux leather, maybe use a bigger seam allowance and stitch it up and then you can go in and trim it down to an eighth of an inch because it's a little bit easier to kind of, you know, clean up the edges or say the fabric layers moved on you a little bit. You can go ahead and trim off anything that might have stuck out on the edges of the seams with scissors after the fact. So that is really, really helpful, especially if you're just starting off or maybe this is a new textile that you've never used before. Okay. Now, if you're working with faux leather, and I'll try to drape this around so you can kind of get an idea for the weight of it, this I would say is maybe like, it's not quite an eighth of an inch thick, maybe like one sixteenth of an inch thick, okay? But you can see that if I fold it like that, even if I hold it, it flops, but it has more of a structured shape. It doesn't pool like a fabric would that's very drapey and thin, okay? You can see that this, you see how it stays rolled up? It has good structure to it, but it is still pliable. So if you've ever maybe hesitated to work with real leather or a really thick vinyl fabric because you think maybe your sewing machine won't go through it, this weight of faux leather that we carry in our online shop is perfect for home sewing machines. So I have my sewing machine here and I'm gonna share with you, you know, some stitching tips and stuff like that, but I want you to see that this is not a fancy heavy duty sewing machine and I can easily stitch through the faux leather. So if you're thinking about, you know, getting into these types of textiles that don't fray, that are thicker, that look different and not just cotton fabric, definitely give these sheets a try. All right, so for cutting, the same way we would cut cotton fabric, you can use rotary cutters, easy, I mean it cuts like butter, super easy. You can also use shears. Nice sharp pair of, sear, of shears is also gonna help cut through it super, super easily, okay? So when it comes to cutting, you're gonna cut it just like any other fabric, easy, right? Now when it comes to sewing, there's a lot of different things that you can do and it's gonna depend on how exactly your sewing machine acts at first try at the faux leather, right? Every machine is gonna be different, even across the same different uh, brands, okay? So for example, I have a heavy duty Juki, my Juki Teal 2010Q, which is a semi-industrial, super hardcore workhorse. It stitches like 1500 stitches a minute and it only sews a straight stitch. This two leathers of this faux leather is absolutely nothing for that machine. But this machine that I have here is another Juki. It is not semi-industrial. It's not heavy duty. It's not just a straight stitch machine. It does other decorative stitches, okay? And so the settings that I use on my semi-industrial Juki do not apply to this one. So you have to play with it a little bit, and I would say maybe just take out one sheet and play around, try different stitch lengths to see what works on your machine. All right. Um, April says, does cutting with the shears dull the blade? So in general, cutting any synthetic is gonna dull your blades more than cutting um, natural fiber fabrics. So. I mean, the answer to your question is gonna be yes over time, but I mean, unless you're buying faux leather and making this for like production level of cranking out faux leather pouches, I don't think it's gonna make really that much of a difference. I sold through this stuff so much because you know, I have to, when I'm designing projects, I have to create um, prototypes, I try different seam allowances, I try different size cuts, and I do that a lot, and I really have not found that it makes that, you know, like a significant difference in my um, shears, okay? So, great question. Mirta says that she loves working with my faux leather. Awesome. If you're a handbag maker and you've never tried this faux leather, give it a try. Especially because they come in these smaller sheets. You can color block the sheets. I have a color block zipper pouch, actually one of my paid courses that I offer like that too. That's super fun to make. You can also include a cotton fabric and, so let's say, let me scoot this out the way. So let's say you wanted to make a pouch that featured uh, the faux leather pretend, something like this, and cotton fabric, 
The main things to keep in mind, and this is not, it's going to be project specific, of course, but I just want to give you some tips and general guidelines. Say you made a zippered pouch that the top was like that and the bottom of it was the faux leather. Okay. But you wanted to feature maybe a chunk or a, a panel of uh, cotton fabric on top. The main thing you want to consider is that the weights of the two fabrics are so different that they will show up. <laughs> in their best form in the finished pouch. Okay. So when we talked about the faux leather being, you know, having some body to it, it can stand by itself. We don't have to interface it. We don't have to add anything else to it. The bottom is going to stand like that. So this is why you often will see in, in different pouches and bags where they will use leather, cork, uh, even waterproof canvas and stuff for the bottom, right? Because it's going to hold up to the wear and tear. It won't get uh, as dirty as just like a, even a light, colored cotton fabric would. So you think about all those things, but going back to the weight of these fabrics, do y'all think I will be able to create panels to attach just out of cotton fabric? The answer is clearly no. This fabric is way too light to hold its own connected and sewn to the faux leather. Okay. Give me a second. Let me drink some water. So what you need to do is try and bring the two or two plus fabrics that you're trying to put together, bring them up as close as you can to about the similar weight. So what does that mean? For those of you that are quilters or bag makers and you've taken my courses and tutorials and clubs in the past, what could we do to this cotton fabric to help bring up the weight of it closer to that of the faux leather? I'm going to look in the chat because I want to see if I got some students who pay attention up in here. All right. Let's see. Um, Snippet Thread is asking, could you offer a lined faux leather pouch pattern or tutorial, please? That would be great. Yeah. So I am working on that. So if you're tuning in today and you're learning some of these tips, you'll definitely be ready for when I put out that tutorial. All right. Anita says, I use a jean needle on my Juki with the vinyls. It works great. No problem. So this is a great tip. When it comes to the needle that you use, remember I talked about my um, Juki um, TL2010Q, the semi-industrial machine? On that machine, I can put an 8012 universal needle and crank through whatever, okay? When you're working on a domestic home sewing machine, I would definitely recommend for sewing with faux leather, especially if whatever project you're making has like multiple seams where maybe some of the things like on our, my pinched zippered pouch, let me show you on this lighter one, it features a step where say you pleat the fabric and then fold it back onto itself and do something like this, where now instead of sewing through two layers, you're sewing through one, two, three, and four. So you have to consider the size of the needle and the machine that you're using, right? To go through this many layers of just this fabric. So again, it's going to be project specific, but a 9014 universal needle, a 9014 top stitch needle, or a 9014 denim or, gen or jeans needle, like one of our viewers just suggested, would be great, okay? So let's see. Yes, yes, I'm getting some answers. So some of y'all are saying, uh, let's go back to the top. Okay. We got, Mirta says, put some SF-101, which is the Bozal, ver uh, Bozal, or excuse me, SF-101 is Shape Flex. That's the Pellon version. I use the Bozal version called Fashion Fuse, but yes, that's a 100% cotton woven uh, fusible interfacing that you could attach to this. So that will add more body, but the SF-101 or Fashion Fuse would make this basically like two layers of a quilting cotton together. So that may work on a, sm like on a smaller project. Would I do that if I was making a big tote bag with faux leather on the bottom and cotton? Probably not. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Not just uh, the, the type of fabric that you're combining with the faux leather, but also the size, right? Because a zippered pouch that features cotton fabric that's just interfaced with SF-101 will hold up and stand up on its own better than a massive tote bag because there the pieces of fabric are bigger and the weight difference will be way more noticeable, okay? So the rest of you are saying, let's see, uh, DuraFuse, which is a crisp non-woven interfacing. It's really crispy, so yes, that would work there as well. Fusible flea, some of you are suggesting. Phyllis says foam, all of that. So you're thinking right along the right lines, exactly what I wanted y'all to say. Some of y'all are saying Decoville Light, fusible fleece. Mary says double layer of your fabric. You see, we got a bunch of bag makers in here, so you know exactly what you need to do to start making the changes to make the fabrics work together. And that's going to be kind of a rule of thumb and a tip to follow along with any projects that you make. If you're combining a lot of different fabrics and weights of fabrics that you want to stand up on their own, remember to try and bring up the lighter weight ones to match the thicker one. Okay. So that was great. 
I'm glad that y'all um, are on the same page and you know you have these tips in your back pocket that you can apply. Now I have this cotton fabric out here too. So another tip is we're working with faux leather. Remember I said this is synthetic. Do we want to iron this? Absolutely not. Okay. If you are working on a project where you are now combining a fabric like cotton that can be ironed and the faux leather, you got to be super careful of where you are hitting that iron. Okay. You always want to do it from the cotton side. So say we had a project where we lined the faux leather with cotton fabric. Anything that I need to do and press, I would do from this side, obviously not on my cutting mat, on an ironing board. But you always want to press anything from the cotton side, okay? Now, one great thing about this faux leather is that it doesn't really crease. It tends to want to roll, so if you're doing something where you need to stitch it down, it's helpful to hold the layers together so that they lie flat instead of moving on you. And so here comes my next tip. When you're working with faux leather, and this is going to apply to any of these synthetic fabrics like vinyl, cork, uh, even waterproof canvas, that kind of stuff, you don't want to use pins. Set your pins away because if you pin through this stuff, one, you may break your pins because they might not even be thick enough to hold the fabric layers. This is like a chunkier pin. I save my really fine pins uh, for my garment sewing, you know, working with thin fabric. So I'm just going to poke this pin, you see, I already bent the pin just trying to get this through. So one is it's going to fight you to push that pin through. I mean, look at that. I literally bent the whole pin. Uh, so that's one thing that's going to happen. And two is that when you remove that pin, you have the holes right there. It's not a woven fabric. It's synthetic. And so you will see that. So the same way that a pin will leave holes in your faux leather, your cork fabric, your vinyl and all that. So will the stitches. So this is where the practice comes in. You don't want to stitch and then be like, oh, it's a little crooked and grab your seam ripper and start taking those stitches out and then say, oh, let me try it again. The more you stitch and rip out stitches everywhere that that needle went through, it is absolutely going to leave a hole. So how do we fix that? Instead, we work with our plastic sewing clips. OK, so when you're holding layers together, make sure that you place clips to hold things in place. You sew a little bit, remove your clip, keep sewing and work your way that way. And just slow down. If you're not that consistent with straight stitches, uh, remember to practice. Practice on cardstock. You can practice sewing through paper so that you don't waste fabric, right? Um, spam mail, you can stitch through anything to get those straight lines of stitching good and in place because faux leather, cork, vinyl, all these kinds of synthetic fabrics, you don't really want to sew through them and then not be happy with your stitches to pull them up. Okay. All right. So let me look here, make sure I'm not missing anything. All right. Okay, great. Now, uh, let's see. Somebody said headliner, uh, headliner fabric to back the other fabric with. Yeah. Anything like that foam, something that adds more body will allow it to be less noticeable, right? The difference in the weights of the two. All right. So my next tip is uh, when you're cutting out multiple shapes and, and, and things that you need to cut out. So say you're making a pattern and it calls for like two different shapes. I highly suggest when you're working with faux leather to cut one layer out at a time. Okay. So if I were to take, let me see if I can draw with this. Nope. Let me grab a pen. So say I needed to cut out like two pieces like this. Where with a thinner fabric, I might be tempted to just fold this together and cut right on the line and cut my pieces out. It's going to be tricky. If I use my rotary cutter, I'm trying to stay. I can already see the fabric wants to like pucker up and move on me because now I've doubled the thickness. And this is, you see how this has already shifted and moved? My pieces are not going to come out the same. So what I would recommend in that case, especially when you're working with thicker fabrics that hold their own weight, is to actually trace the template on the full open sheet, take scissors and cut them out individually. You don't want to be double layering faux leather fabric, all right? Because you're not going to get the precise cut that you want, right? So that your project turns out and it's all the dimensions that you need. So that say I would do one like that, then, you know, grab your template, whatever it is that it calls for, trace it out and then cut the other one, the separate separately. Okay. All right. Now, when it comes to sewing with this stuff, let's talk about some sewing tips. Let's see. 
Uh, Rosie says, or you can use binder clips if you're sewing through thick layers. Yeah, and I think full leather, two layers of full leather, definitely for me at least, constitutes as bulky layers, you know? Sometimes in quilting we think if we have multiple layers of fabric plus batting or foam interfacing, that's bulky layers too. Anything like that, that's maybe more than two to four just basic cotton fabric layers, I definitely um, would grab a couple of clips to help things stay together for you, okay? All right, let me grab my foot pedal real quick. Okay, so now let's talk about sewing. So for me, and this can be personal preference, but I'll tell you why I recommend thread that is 100% polyester, okay? And when I say 100% polyester, I don't mean like the super cheap 100% polyester uh, serger cone thread. You can probably get away with that stuff, but I like to keep a good quality polyester thread on hand because I also use polyester thread uh, in my garments, especially when they're stretch knits, right? I use, let me see, yep, I use like a burgundy color. This is a Guterman thread that I used on this Westchester Dolman top that I made several years ago. And so for bags, I like to just jam pack my bags full of stuff. So I know that I wanna have the strongest thread possible. So I'm working with just an all-purpose polyester thread here. And uh, that's just, it, it's gonna hold together better because it's stronger. It's a synthetic fiber, right, man-made, and so naturally it's just gonna be, not naturally, because it's not natural, but uh, it's going to be stronger than a natural fiber thread like cotton. It's just the way that it is, okay? All right, let's see. Oh, Mary T is asking, oop, I lost the comment, where'd it go? I think she was asking, can you use, could you glue decorations on the faux leather? Absolutely, it's just gonna depend on the type of glue that you use. So for example, an Elmer's glue is not gonna work on this. But if you use a kind of industrial strength craft glue that allows you to stick all different types, and I always recommend that you read, like what is it for? Because some of them are for plastic, some are not for plastic. Some will work on metals, some won't. So just read it and make sure that it says like faux leather, or vinyl or and stuff like that, then it should work fine for you. But yes, if you let them dry and cure correctly, you'll be able to, to do different things. Now, for those of you that want to attach different parts, different pieces of faux leather to something else, you can also do like machine applique on your, your project. So say we cut out a little heart, and I'm just going to eyeball this. Don't judge. Let me see if I can make this look halfway decent. And I just finished saying, don't cut through two layers, but that's what I'm doing here just to eyeball myself a little heart. Okay, so pretend. I have a little heart here. Say I made one of these little pouches, my little Kendall snap pouch. This is a free tutorial. Y'all can check it out on my YouTube channel. And I wanted to stitch this here. You just can, you don't even have to, like in regular sewing with cotton fabric, oftentimes or in quilting, we'll do a zigzag stitch to stitch this down and around like proper machine applique. And the reason we do that oftentimes with a satin stitch or a zigzag is because that will cover up the raw edge of the cotton, right? But this isn't cotton. So you don't have to conceal the raw edge of the applique piece. You can just do a straight stitch. You stay about an eighth of an inch in and you just stitch around and around. Now, of course, I would stick this down e either with like a wash away wonder tape or a double-sided sticky tape. I would just put a little piece in the center to help keep it steady so that as I'm sewing, it doesn't move on me, right? Because we can't really put pins through it to hold it in place. And if it's placed in the center of a project, the clips are not gonna reach far enough in to hold it. So these are little design things that you need to keep in mind on what, when you're working on projects. So put some type of a glue or adhesive or double-sided sticky tape or something to hold it where you want it. And then you can just stitch around it because remember the raw edges can stay raw. So that's another great way to use bits and scraps left over from different faux leather sheets on your projects, okay? And, and you don't have to sew it to faux leather, uh, to faux leather, right? You can sew it to uh, an interfaced fabric, a quilted fabric that you're working on a, on a like on a handbag or a backpack or something. So you, these are basically like your own standalone little patches that you just machine applique to whatever you want. So think about that too, because I know a lot of times when we make these pouches, we oftentimes have scraps left over. And that's just another tip on how you can use those scraps, okay? Sue says, what about a glue gun? So a glue gun, uh, depending on what you're planning to stick to, if it's like one of those hot glue guns, it will probably hold temporarily. If I use the glue gun, I would probably do a teeny dot like in the center of that heart, and then I would stitch around it. What I don't want you to do is use a glue gun and then 
like have that glue dry in an area where you plan to stitch. That can get super bulky when it's fully dried. If it's not fully dried and you try to stitch over it, you can run the risk of gumming up and messing up your machine. And then when it's fully dry, it can be too thick and you can break your needle or your machine. Okay, so yeah, I would not use a glue gun personally on anything that I was going to stitch. Uh, like stitch over where the glue was. Okay, so let's do the stitching. We talked about using a good quality 100% polyester thread. Um, and then the stitch length. This is key and you will have to practice this on some sample pieces first. So for example, I'm gonna leave this machine on the default setting for straight stitch. When I turn on the machine, the stitch length on this Juki LB5020 defaults to 2.2 millimeters. That's really small. That's great for cotton fabric because when the stitch length is short, it will really help hold those layers together so your seams don't come apart. However, on faux leather, let's see what it does at a 2.2. Can you see what's happening? It's barely feeding through, and I can already see that my fabric, even though I had aligned it straight, look at it, it's starting to veer off an eighth of an inch and further. Let me, um, what'd you say? Yeah, slide it, and then I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit more so y'all can see. So this is what I was pointing out. You see the white here, which is the back of this yellow fabric? I have these aligned up top, and now look, if I let it go, it's already veering off to the side. So because it's bulky, but it's not just that, because the machine can stitch through the layers, what's happening is that the stitch length is so short, the feed dogs that are underneath the machine are pulling the, the lower fabric layer through, but they are not tall enough to go up through two layers of faux leather to maintain this one in the position where I aligned it. So that's why it's like veering off. This guy's staying straight, but this one is being moved by the top of the presser, or excuse me, by the bottom of the uh, presser foot here on the machine. So again, I'm gonna grab this and try and force it over. And it is having, I mean, it's like pulling it through, but not really fast enough. So I'm gonna sew a little bit more like that. But you can see this is a home sewing machine. This is not an, a super like semi-industrial, heavy duty, nothing of that. And I just have the regular universal foot on it. Not all machines will be able to do this, okay? So keep that in mind. If your machine has trouble and sometimes whether it's a metal or plastic foot, you'll find that it gets hung up. And this can happen on faux leather, sometimes on cork fabric, depending on the machine, on vinyl, stuff like that. A quick tip is... Do I have any here? No, nope, my daughter probably took it. Let me turn around here and grab some uh, washi tape from my drawer. I buy these in like the tubes. You can uh, use washi tape, which is just a super cute like scrapbooking and, and card making tape that is you can find at any stationery store. And I would just cut a little chunk of this and I would put it underneath the presser foot. What it does is it allows kind of a smooth surface for the fabric to flow through. And if your machine, obviously I don't need to do this on this Juki, but if your machine is getting hung up, that's one tip. If your machine came with a Teflon foot, that's another option too. And then, um, let's see, another option is this next tip, which I'm gonna share with you here. I wanted to go about halfway with the shorter stitch length. Now I'm gonna lengthen my stitch length to 4.5 millimeters, okay? And you can see how that's going through a lot quicker because the stitch is longer. And so it's pulling the fabric through a lot more quickly. Let me cut this real quick. And I am going to zoom in here because I want y'all to see. Oh. oh, come on. Okay, so this part is curling up on me. And that is the super short stitch length. Like you can't even see the stitch definition because it's so short. Okay, they're so close together. Look at that, it like curls up. Now here, things lie flatter and the stitch is longer. All right, and that was from 2.2 to 4.5. So some machines, in order to get stitches that lie flatter, smoother, and it feeds through the machine quicker, you may need to adjust that stitch length. So this was 4.5, that works pretty good. I can probably get away with maybe four millimeters too. Some of you may have a machine where like three, 3.5, it's just like still way too short and it's not feeding through. You may find that you need to go all the way up to five millimeters or 5.5. So grab yourself a scrap and determine that first. And if you can, you know, you can put a little post-it note somewhere by your sewing table so you know, hey, when I sew with uh, faux leather, I need to have the straight stitch length 
set to this setting on this machine so you don't have to, you know, use up fabric and scraps every single time because you won't remember. We all think we remember. We don't. So yeah, make your, uh, you know, take yourself some notes. Okay. Yes, Rosie says embroidery machines do great work on my faux leather. It does. And so oftentimes I will get this question when we feature either cork or faux leather. Some people will ask, well, does the embroidery stitches, because it's, you know, they're, if you do machine embroidery, you know there's a lot of thread build up there. They ask, well, does that perforate the faux leather? And it doesn't. It won't just pop off on you. It really is a good weight, a good thickness that holds up to the weight of a stabilizer on the back, you know, whatever it is, whether cut away or tear away, whatever you're using, and the dense stitching of a machine embroidery. So think about that too. All right. Oh, Linda, thank you. She says, be sure to check out the current edition of Quilt Folk. There's a wonderful feature on Vanessa. Yes, there is. Quilt Folk. Uh, you can check out quiltfolk.com. It's an ad-free magazine that features different regions of the country and quilters. And so this most recent one is on uh, North Florida. So I do have a, a, a piece in there of, of a couple different uh, pages. Super fun to do. All right. Yolanda says, nothing like the feed dog system on a Juki. I would have to agree. And April says that a Teflon foot really helps. Yes. Yeah, so again, I show you this to show you an example that different machines work differently. So sometimes what you see people doing in a video or a tutorial or even an online course, it may not apply exactly to what you have at home. And so I have students that will be like, well, I tried this and it didn't work. And then they think that it's them, right? Not necessarily. Each machine is going to be slightly different. You just have to find the sweet spot of what works for you. So we talked about using 100% polyester thread, a good quality thread, using a needle like a 9014 universal top stitch or jeans or denim needle, and then lengthening your stitch length. Okay. If your machine is getting hung up. So this is that five millimeter stitch length. And that, I mean, that's, Especially if you like to do top stitching like I do with a different color so that you get that contrast and that high pop of color, this would be perfect. Assuming that you sew, you know, nice and straight. You don't want to have like crooked stitches in a contrasting color because then any little bobble that you have in your seam line is going to show up. So, but uh, uh, another quick and easy way to decorate your seams and make your project stand out without just having everything blend in. Okay. All right. Oh, you're welcome, Carla. She says, awesome tip. Thank you. Carla's asking, can you wipe down faux leather when you get marks from use? Yes. So what I often do is I just use a damp microfiber cloth and I just wipe it down just with water. Now you got to uh, look at it because if you're using the faux leather on the bottom of a bag and it's, it looks like it's just dirty and the dirt is kind of like on top, you may wipe it off and then realize that it's actually you know, some like not eaten away at the fabric, but like it's scraped off the texture. Then obviously you know, you won't be able to wipe that off, but yeah, just a quick wipe down. Absolutely. It's water uh, repellent. So you can just wipe it down. It's no big deal. Okay. And Jean is also suggesting that you could use a walking foot, which is also true. I oftentimes don't, you know, when I do my tutorials, I try to mention all these tips and that's why another reason I do these live streams. But again, as you can see, like, I don't even need to take out any of my different feet on this machine. And this is just like a home sewing machine. So if again, if your machine is not feeding the two or three or four layers through, that's another thing that you can use to try and troubleshoot is use a walking foot. The walking foot is going to basically have feed dogs underneath the foot itself that are going to remember how I said that the feed dogs on the machine feed the fabric, the lower fabric layer through, but they're not tall enough to reach the top layer. Well, when you install a walking foot, the walking foot has feed dogs here. So then it more evenly allows the fabric to feed through the machine because there's now feed dogs from the machine underneath and you have feed dogs from the walking foot on top. Okay. So that is also another tip, but you may also find that you have a sewing machine that just won't let you sew through multiple thick layers because the presser foot bite, as I call it, when we put the presser foot down, okay, this chomping motion that the foot makes on the fabric that now squeezes the fabric between the bed of the machine and the presser foot and doesn't allow it to move anywhere is what I call that presser foot bite. Okay. This is not the, um, like your foot pedal pressure that you're pressing down. This has to do with the pressure of the presser foot as it's applied to the fabric itself. Now, some machines will have a knob somewhere here where you can adjust and loosen up the, um, th that bite, but some machines do not. And I find that on some like lower end, more entry level machines, there is a set space here, right? 
You can put regular fabric in, like regular cotton fabric, and the presser foot comes down, and they, and that's it. Like there's no give in the height of the presser foot. So if you're putting in multiple layers here and you chomp down, it's gonna get even tighter with the pressure that's applied, and it makes it harder for it to feed through. So keep that in mind. On this machine, this is something that comes in really handy. If anybody's out there uh, in the market for a new machine, I would look for this. If you like to sew thick stuff, right? If you're quilting things, if you're making handbags and you're sewing through bulk, or even if you make garments and you wanna make like fleece hoodies, this, this right here is key. And let me make sure that you can see it. Okay, let me see. Okay, so my presser foot, and I think I'll leave this here. Maybe you can see it better with some color underneath. The presser foot is up. You can see that I can move my fabric, right? If I slip the fabric under and I put the presser foot down, now you see that I cannot move the fabric, okay? Now, if I was sewing something that was even thicker than this, watch what happens. I lift the presser foot up and that's the clearance that I get. But this Juki LB5020, if I push up on the presser foot lever, it goes up even higher. Do you see that? And I'm going to fold this up. There's like what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight layers of the faux leather. And you can see, I mean, this is over half of an inch thick in height and I can still slide it under and then put this down, right? So if you can lift further up, right? So press your foot down, press your foot up, but press your foot higher up. That is a huge, huge benefit to have on a machine if you need to like get in there with a bulky area, if you're top stitching the hood of a hoodie that you made, if you're top stitching a handbag around the top opening through all the bulk and seam allowance. That is huge. And even a lot of higher end machines will not have that feature. So again, presser foot is up there, but I can press up on the lever and I'll turn it around. So if you're at a, sh at a store and you are um, you know, in the market for a new machine, Check this out. Look for, look to see if the machine that you're gonna get is this. So the lever is down, and yeah, y'all can see that. And then here it's up, but look, it can go higher up and give me way more clearance. I mean, it's almost an inch of clearance. I would say about three eighths of an inch clearance. Okay, so huge feature for bag makers. Some of you may have found that you have struggled to top stitch stuff because of that, right? Because the presser foot only goes so high when you put the presser foot up. So anyways, that's kind of a tangent, but. Y'all know I love my Jukies. And we still don't have these machines in stock. We have like 30 of y'all on the wait list. As soon as we get the machines in, we will send out an email to those of you on the wait list so that you know, you know, you can order them already. So for a 300 something dollar machine, that's huge. Okay. <laughs> Glenda says, how did I not know my little Juki could do that? There you go. This is what I'm here for y'all to share all the tips. <laughs> uh, she says, I learned something new. Thank you, girl. You're welcome. All right, uh, Crystal has a great question. She says, can you run faux leather through a serger? So the answer to that is going to be yes, assuming that you have the correct size needles to go through there. And I unplugged this. I don't think I'll need it anymore, but let me just put it back on just in case. Um, and then that your blade is new-ish, right? Because again, we talked about the same way that the blades on your scissors get dull, the more synthetic uh, fabrics that you cut, the same thing is going to apply to the blade on your serger. So if you do a lot of stuff with synthetic garments, uh, and synthetic fabrics. It's just thicker fabric and it's a synthetic. It's just going to wear your blade a little bit more, but yeah, you can totally do that again on that because it's, if you, especially if you're sewing through two layers of faux leather, I would again lengthen the stitch length on your serger. Okay. Oh yeah. Eunice says, I never knew a machine had that kind of feature. Oh my gosh. I'm blowing everybody's minds today. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Um, Iris says she has the machine, but she can't lift it higher. Yeah, just push it up. It's a little bit hard because you're, you know, you got to push up against it, but just give it a good push, Iris, and it goes up. All right, let's see. Okay, let me double check my little list. We talked about not ironing directly on the fabric. Remember, if even if you're making a project that uses just the faux leather, I really have not found that I need to press it anywhere. It doesn't really hold a crease, right? So you see how it bubbles up like this? you'd have to stitch it down, right? And then it'll just go back to its shape wherever it bubbles out like that. So I haven't found the need to have to iron the faux leather at all, 
But if you are combining cotton fabric with the faux leather and you need to iron some part of it, always make sure that you hit it with the iron on the uh, cotton side, not here. <laughs> Definitely not, you'll melt it. All right, and then we talked about cutting through one layer at a time and not just folding uh, the, the fabric twice, <laughs> like I did for the heart, but pretend. So cut your pieces out once if you're using templates. Then we said no pins. You definitely wanna use your plastic clips to hold the layers together because the pins, remember, will make holes in your fabric. We talked about the polyester thread because it's super strong and will hold up. And then the longer stitch length. And we shared a couple more tips about like washi tape on the presser foot, Teflon. Also, another tip that I often share when you're sewing with um, clear vinyl typically or, or the thicker vinyls that come in like glittery colors and stuff. I like to sometimes use, I don't have any right here, but gift wrapping tissue paper, like the tissue paper you put in a gift bag on top and, well, I would say underneath and or on the top and underneath when you're stitching through. And that little buffer, the tissue paper, tends to work like the washi tape, and it just doesn't let the stickiness of the vinyl or the faux leather stick to either the plastic or the metal of your presser foot or the bed of the machine. So just having that thin tissue paper buffer, top and bottom or either or, whichever side is close to the feed dog, sometimes that side tends to give us a little bit more of a hang up. If you run a thin layer in between, the machine and the, the vinyl typically, but it may work for faux leather. For those of you that still find that your machine struggles to sew through it, um, that would work also as another tip for sewing if you don't have a Teflon foot, okay? Um, Penny's asking about the weight of the faux leather that I sell. I really don't know the actual weight because I don't, typically if we were to order from a manufacturer in yardage, they would give us that information, but I get these already pre-cut. Um, so I'd have to look up and see, but I mean, it's a great question because like I said, all the faux leather and even vinyls are not created equally. They all can vary, but at least I've created videos and classes and tutorials and demos to show y'all the types of projects that you can make with this faux leather. And again, you don't have to have a heavy duty industrial machine to sew through this faux leather that we carry. I do it on a home sewing machine really with no issues. Okay. All right. Let's see. Okay. Kathy says her baby lock also has that extra height on the presser foot. Awesome. I feel like everybody's going to go to their sewing room now and just check to see if their machine can go higher up. <laughs> it does help when you're sewing through bulky stuff. Okay. Let's go ahead and put my face on so we can finish off the day. Just checking to see if there's any last questions here. All right. Um... Yep, everything is just about the Juki that... Okay, oh, I have a question here that Aisha Day is asking, do you have a lesson or tips on adding piping to vinyl projects? I don't have anything on that, um, but I should work on something like that because I have done, you know, cotton piping for different bags that I've taught in my, in my online courses and bag clubs in the past, but that would be super cool to add to the vinyl. So thank you for that suggestion. I'm going to write that down on my... <laughs> super long list of to-do things, right? All right. Great. Oh, Iris has a question. She says, can you talk about the thread weight? So typically for most of these like little pouch projects and this stuff, I typically use a polyester thread that's around 40 weight. Okay. So 50 weight, if you're a quilter, you know, is kind of our run of the mill. It's a light, you know, thin cotton that we use for piecing our patchwork pieces and making stuff. So 40 weight, the, so the way that the thread works is the lower the weight, the thicker the thread, okay? So the say if we're quilters, we start off sewing cotton fabric with just a 50 weight cotton. If we go down to a 40 weight, whether cotton or polyester, that thread is typically thicker than the 50 weight. And if you go to 30 weight, it's even thicker. So like 27 and 30 weight is, or even 12 weight, is stuff that I use for top stitching, right? The thread is thick, you want your stitches to pop out and typically for top stitching on anything so that you can see the stitch definition and you can see what the color of that thread is. Oftentimes I'll do that in a variegated uh, thread color or something bright and poppy, like I say, right? So that's for the thicker stuff. For construction of these types of bags, I almost, always use a 40 weight, 100% polyester. 
okay? I don't go higher up because you can find polyester, remember I said, is stronger than a natural uh, fiber like cotton. So you can find polyester threads in the 80 weight or 100 weight. And now remember, the higher we go up in thread weight, the thinner the thread is. So like Wonderfill's Invisifil. If you were in my first quilt club, you know we used Invisifil and we've done stuff like um, free motion quilting with the super, I mean, the thread is so thin, it adds virtually no weight to the project and you can't even barely see it. I've done, I've used that Invisifil to do like needle turn applique and I use contrasting color to the fabric that I'm uh, needle turning and you can't even see the thread because it's so thin, right? You're not going to find a cotton that thin because it would just break like that. But in a synthetic fiber like polyester, it is super strong. It's so thin, but it's so, so strong. So for bags, I typically use 40 for construction seams, 40 weight polyester thread for construction seams. And sometimes I'll go down and use a thicker thread for the top stitching, right? Like the decorative edge of it. So that's just kind of like a little overview on thread. Great. All right. Great. So it looks like that is it. Thank you everybody for tuning in today for Whip Wednesday number 41. If you're new around here, make sure that you click the subscribe button to our YouTube channel. I typically go live every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern here with some type of a demo, a project, some instructional that's live and interactive. I take your questions on here live and I would love to have you join us in future Whip Wednesday episodes. Thanks again for watching everybody. Don't forget to share this and give it a thumbs up. Have a great weekend and I will see you next week.